Welcome everyone back to the Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. Back once again for another edition of Facing Reality is its host, Jihad Abdul Mumit. Jihad mm -hmm. was himself incarcerated for 23 years as a political prisoner for his involvement as a Black Panther and member of the Black Liberation Army, and is currently the co-chairperson for the National Jericho Amnesty Movement, a vanguard organization that supports domestic political prisoners, prisoners of war, and calls for their freedom and amnesty from prison. Welcome back to The Real News, Jihad. Welcome back. Thank you, Brother John. Peace, so everybody. So you wanted in this edition of Facing Reality to tell us uh, some new information about some upcoming parole possibilities and specifically about Jaleel Muntakeen, whose new book of poetry and essays has just been published, Escaping the Prism, Fade to Black. So uh, tell us what the latest is. Well, the latest is that uh, Brother Jaleel Abdul Muntakeen, he's uh, been incarcerated since the early 70s, uh, part of the uh, Black Panther Party and Black Liberation Army. Um, this is one of our freedom fighters. And when we ask how can we help in a situation that has lapsed over now for decades, now is an opportunity for the public to tune in. Uh, the best way to access information on Brother Jalil is to access our website or his own website. Our website is the, the jerichomovement.com, very easy to remember. And his is even easier, uh, Free Jalil. Dot com and they'll give you specific instructions about writing letters. It comes to a time where, where the political strategies to free our freedom fighters and the legal strategies to free our freedom fighters, where they may intersect, and oftentimes they do. And the political strategies is to campaign, educate communities about their arrests, what they fought for, drawing that vital, vital connection between the past and the present, with all the struggles and the same issues that, by the way, the Black Panther Party addressed in the 60s with police brutality, racial profiling, uh, exploitation of our communities and the like. But these are the reasons why Jalil Abdul Mutakim, who fought for our freedoms to, to better our conditions, is in prison. Now is the time to connect for all movement people, all community people, all conscious minded people, to maybe to tune into our website and see how letters can be written. Because I can tell you this while we may not be in tune. These prisoners, particularly just for example, the ones that are in New York State, every time that they go up for the pro board, and there's been quite a few times, and they've all served their minimum times on their sentences, that at the push of a button, that the police benevolent association can send out thousands of emails, you know, with all their cronies, friends, and supporters, with their misinformation, advocating that these brothers do not be released from prison. So the pro board, if it was any neutrality at all, is way is 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 waylaid by this. So what how we have to begin to counter this. And so by going to the website and writing the letters and voicing, voicing your support is, is very important to give a brother a chance. So once again, the legal strategy of going to the pro board, our political efforts in the community as far as educating brothers and sisters in the community about how to help. Now we converge this together. The legal activity of going to the pro board, and hopefully there'll be some 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 glitter of light there to uh, to get this comrade free from prison. So um, he's you know, going Jihad, to the pro board in June. So we have time to do some work. You know, Jihad, I also just wanted to point out very quickly and encourage people to not only when they go to these websites, but to review some of the work uh, oh, from from these prisoners. I mean, Jihad, I mean, Jalil mm -hmm. in particular has been very vocal over the years in, in commenting, writing essays. He's had a lot to say about Black Lives Matter and the potential of, the, of this movement and the need for further organization and, and radicalism. Mm -hmm. Um, right. He's as we mentioned, he's got uh, this new book out. He's got uh, a, a previous work out as well. Uh, we are our own liberators is a, is a very powerful book, uh, uh, just to name but one. But I wanted to, if you could, just give a quick summary, if you would, uh, of J Jaleel's case for those who may not be familiar. What exactly is he accused of? What was his role, uh, uh, as it's uh, understood, in the, in this struggle? And what was he accused of? Uh, and, and why is it, in fact, is the state claimed? Uh, is there reason for for holding him this long? Uh, yes, I try to squeeze this in in very serious perspective that I'm going ready to give my listening audience here. Okay, I, he, Jalil Abdul Mutakin, also known as Anthony Bottom, is accused of shooting a police officer. Very serious offense. So these allegations, his whole trial has been conflicted with many contradictions, false in, information the whole nine yards. But I want to say, 
that when it comes to liberating our freedom fighters, when the political notion is that we all had a right to self-determination and freedom. And I'm getting ready to take our listening audience through a very serious quantum leap, a very serious mental quantum leap. What is a freedom fighter? What is his role in our community to protect our community against police violence, racial violence, and intimidation? Jalil is one of those comrade brothers that did that and stood up. The question now, because not is whether his guilt or innocent, but whether or not we as a people had the right to determine our own destiny and fight for our freedoms and defend our communities. And like I think I said in one program earlier, my brother uh, uh, Jared, is that if you look at a book of Nat Turner or Sojourner Truth or Harriet Tubman today, when you open up this history book, do you see a criminal or do you see a freedom fighter? When you look at Jalil's case, when you go on the website and review all the information about his case, do you begin to see a freedom fighter or do you see a criminal? Because for the most part, the government and the media has criminalized our whole movement. Every last one of us are a criminal. And it's not the issue when we talk about taking it to the United Nations, presenting it to the world court. Did we have a right? Did we have a right to stand up in any way, fashion or form? to defend our rights as a community. That's a very important point when you read the information. Otherwise, you'll be left sitting on your couch thinking, well, should this cop killer be released? Shouldn't Nate, Nat Turner have ever been hanged? Should Harriet Tubman ever have even risked her life to shuttle uh, 300 people uh, 650 miles to their freedom on 19 journeys? How dare she do this? My goodness, I wish she was caught. This is, this is the thought that I'm asking the listening audience to go through their mind. So how can we circ circumvent this? How can we reclaim, regather? How can we free those that stood up and fought for us, for our freedom? So the question really is, okay, he's charged with killing police officer? Hmm. Oh, really now? That to the unconscious person. To the conscious person, not only would you weigh the, the guilt, the evidence of it, okay, do that. You're free to do that. But you also be able to put it in a political perspective who this person was. Look at the state and the apparatus and what we were going up against with the whole Callan Challenges program, all the way from the lynchings and the hangings and the water holes and the cattle prize and who killed Martin Luther King for real and who killed Malcolm X for real and all the conditions, who killed everybody. Eleanor Bumpers from Eric Gardner, it doesn't matter. We are faced with these issues here. And now it's time for the community to take that stand and say, you know what, I'm going to do the very simple thing. I'm going to pick up my pen and I'm going to write a letter in defense of this brother. Not only that, I'm going to write the brother and his mother, everybody else that know, so I can show concern and, and I can stand up. Very simple effort to be done. And let me also uh, double that, that encouragement to write, Jaleel, uh, who will write you back and will be quick to tighten you up if he catches you slipping in your analysis <laughs> or your approach. He's still you know a viable, that, right? intelligent brother. Oh, absolutely. I got a letter from <laughs> in my pocket right now yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, keeping me on point. So, uh, um, But anyway, we appreciate you uh, joining us again, uh, Jihad abdul Mumit, uh, for another edition of uh, Facebook. Reality. You had a quick question on the 16 elections with reparations? Well, let's go ahead and do it. I, I, I thought we might save it for a, another segment, but let's well, go ahead and start We can save here. it for another segment. I can give it a little 30-minute. You know, uh, 30, well, 30 seconds. 30 you know, seconds, something yeah. just, you know, as people start to, they're looking, particularly uh, uh, on the so-called left, a lot of Bernie Sanders uh, in the electoral, the excitement around his political campaign going right now. Is there a, 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 um, a platform approach or or a, uh, an agreed upon approach uh, from the Jericho movement uh, among political prisoners or any of those that you're working with uh, in terms of dealing with uh, uh, electoral politics, conventional electoral politics in particular in this country? Uh, or is there, uh, or, yeah, just right, where's where, where, where yeah. everybody going with this? Right, understood. Well, you know, as far as a uniform approach, no, not. Mm. But as far as a needed approach, yes, we need an approach. We need a strategy to approach, particularly these candidates. Somebody said, well, I don't want to have anything to do with electoral product. You know, not part of that whole political process, but actually we are. We are the victims of that, of that whole political process, the electoral. So we are the victims. We understand that. So now do we vote? You're hearing Jihad Abdul with me advocating for people to vote. But here's the deal. That now we're at a point where everybody's fishing around for votes. We're talking about Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, I would assume. We're not talking about Donald Trump and his ilk, but we're talking, but, but even so, we're talking about getting to candidates now with our, with our mechanism, our community apparatus and forging forward the, the issue of political prison. Now, if it's gonna be any time, now is the time, just like with Barack Obama, I'm sure, so we're all disappointed in a lot of things that he's done. 
I know I am, you know, and particularly not even mentioning or acknowledging a lot of issues of impacting black people in the community, let alone political prisoners. But still, we are trying to 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 approach this brother, you know, and, and present all the issues and, and demand the clemency and, and amnesty. Now is the time. It's just a, nothing beats a, a failure, but a try. And the trying opens our vision to other strategies. We got to get in the mix. I mean, other than that, I assume I'll be expecting to see you on the corner with a rifle. You're not doing that, are you? And what would be that anyway? So now what are we left to do? We organize ourselves in a strong, formidable block and we present our issues and we demand that they be heard. And now is the best time while everybody's up for us uh, taking in promises from the people and making them. All so, right. yes, when we can explore that a little more and reparations and freedom of political prisons should definitely be one of them. Absolutely. We want to we want to include you in these conversations as more and more people uh, engage them around the elections and reparations and so on and so forth. Uh, but Jihad Abdul Mumit, thank you again for joining us here at The Real News for your segment, Facing Reality, a look at political prisoners. Brother Jared, thank you very much. And assalamu alaikum to my listening audience. And thank you all for joining us here at The Real News. Again, I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore saying, as always, as Fred Hampton used to say, to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind.